Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're gonna to talk about something which is in epic proportions worldwide, as well as in India, uh, and it goes by the name of dengue. About 11 years ago, when we first came to India, I had been out and about. I just loved it here, and I was walking everywhere, playing tennis, doing other things. And as usual, you can't do that in midday, it's too hot. So you're gonna do it in the mornings and the evenings, and it just so happens my nemesis was out at the same time. Because unbeknownst to me, the female uh, Egypti mosquito was out hunting for some blood to fertilize her eggs, or rather to uh, bear her eggs. And so what happened was I had come home from work and I just could not get warm. And I had a headache and I couldn't figure out. And, in India, we get a lot of virals, right? Quote, unquote, virals. Obviously, with COVID and everything, we worry when we get high fevers as to whether it could be COVID. But the truth is, for the last 11 years, I've gotten any number of different virals, but this one was different. And as soon as I got home, I mentioned to my wife, I'm not feeling well. And she's like, well, what's going on? She's like, I, I, I told her I just can't get warm. And she, having grown up here, said, look, let's take your temperature. And sure enough, it was 103.5. And me being the Western trained physician said, look, it's no big deal. I'll just take, you know, some medicines and, you know, go to bed. I'm sure it'll be better in the morning. She's like, no, at 103.5, we need to like work you up. Next thing I know, there's a lab drawer or a blood drawer from the lab at my doorstep taking blood for a variety of things. And so they checked for typhoid, they checked for malaria, they checked for all the routine things, and they also checked for dengue. Worse yet, as things progressed, I just started to get a headache, which was the worst headache I've ever had. It felt like my, my, the back of my head was being hit with a sledgehammer, and my, my bones started hurting. And you know, I've, I've had some of these sort of flu-like symptoms before, but not like this. And no matter what I tried, paracetamol, uh, you name it, cold packs on my head, whatever, it wouldn't get better. And the first set of labs came back within about six to 12 hours, and I didn't have malaria, that was good. And I didn't have typhoid, that was great. And I didn't appear to have any type of um, other common infectious things that happen in India. So I th thought, well, maybe I can take some more medications, and so I took a naproxen, which is a non anti-inflammatory, thinking that would make it better. About 24 hours in, the uh, ELISA and, and the RT-PCRs for dengue came back positive, and I was diagnosed with dengue. What ensued was a week's worth of horrible bone pains, horrible headaches, no appetite, and I literally lost five kilograms of weight. Not exactly the diet you need or want. And more than that, I just had the worst weakness. It lasted for about a week, but it took me almost three weeks to get better. And I, I tell you, for someone as fit as I was at the time, I was just amazed how it knocked me off my horse and made me humble. And so I started to do some research on it, even back then, and I said, what can we do to change that? So let's talk a little bit about dengue. Dengue is from the flavivirus uh, genus, and it constitutes four different serotypes. Its incidence has gone up dramatically in the last 40 years because they think it's due to increase in industrialization and stagnant pools of water, as well as construction sites, as well as potted plants and other things. Uh, we've seen more and more uh, epidemics of this in India. And in particular, more so than malaria, the problem with dengue is while you can get diagnosed, you can't necessarily be treated with anything but symptomatic care. The problem with dengue is while it has a lot of the normal symptoms of a flu, and one of the hallmarks is a very high fever, as well as the bone pains, the headaches, and the lack of appetite and all that, the other hallmark is that up to two to 5% of the uh, people who get it will become hemorrhagic, meaning that their platelets will be attacked and the platelet count will go down. So I remember during that week, every day for the first four or five days, 
They were sending a blood draw home to check my platelet count, and it did go down from about 150 to 80. If in those patients you start to get bleeding from the gums, from the eyes, from the gut, uh, from other areas, spontaneously, that's the time that we need to think about going in to the doctor. But the, the real question is, um, you know, in my case, as well as in other people's cases, what can be done about it? And dengue is fairly common. They estimate up to 390 million cases worldwide, of which only 92 million are symptomatic. Why some people get symptomatic and some don't is a real question, and it can be reflected on four different factors um, in the literature. But what is clear is that if you get dengue to one type of serotype, you'll probably be immune to that serotype. You can still have it from the three others. And the second infection can be worse than the first, and you can have a drop in platelets and whatnot. The second thing is, other than symptomatic care and support, what can be done to prevent it? They're testing out a whole host of uh, uh, vaccines, and they're all in phase one, phase two trials, but nothing has been uh, shown to reduce the numbers for dengue um, substantially. So really what it comes down is to mosquito control, which means that in urban areas, we need to control any stagnant water. If you have potted plants, you get rid of the containers underneath so that you don't have stagnant water. And then the second thing is at dawn and dusk, try to avoid going out. Um, the third thing is wear long sleeve shirts um, when you're going out. And the fourth thing is to wear uh, anti-mosquito repellents. You can get either um, natural stuff or, or in, in some parts of the world, DEET is what we use. And those have their own set of downfalls. But I think in India, until we normalize all of that, malaria and dengue are still going to be an issue. So the, the take home is this, that dengue can be prevented potentially. If you get the signs and symptoms, um, you need to take rest. And if you have a very high fever, get tested for it so you know it's not something else. When do you go to the doctor? If you have unremitting nausea and vomiting, if you have bleeding from any of your orifices or from your eyes or whatnot, or alternatively, if you've, you can't eat anything and you're, you're having trouble, you need to be uh, evaluated by a physician and even admitted and hydrated and watched very carefully because the worst thing that could happen is if you develop hemorrhagic fever and start to uh, bleed, in which case you do need to be in a hospital setting. Fortunately, in my case, it self-resolved. I will tell you it was the most humbling experience because for someone as strong as I was, to have something like this really told me a story that you need to protect yourself. But I would say that all of you guys out there need to keep an eye for this and take the precautions that we've just talked about. It's really not that uh, mind boggling to wear a long sleeve shirt and to wear uh, mosquito repellent and to avoid dawns and dusts if you can. Um, I love to walk, I love to get out, you know me by now, and it's hard for me, so I have to go the extra distance to do that. But even with that, I haven't got dengue again, and thankfully I haven't gotten malaria. Malaria is another story for another day, which my wife got off the sets, but that too is something which you can protect against. I hope this has helped you in understanding this. Um, the video will have a lot of supporting um, data in terms of where you can find it, it's tropical and subtropical, and also what we've seen in terms of the numbers going up in the last 40 years. And I hope that'll help you in understanding this disease and not being afraid of it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As always, if you like what we say, hit the like button. If you uh, wanna see more of these videos, hit the subscribe button and always tell your friends so that they can share it with others. Um, thank you for joining me and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.